This is Craig Daniels. Welcome to a new video series I'm producing calling the Tech Tutor Series, helping you get the most out of the technology resources available to you today, getting things done better, faster, smarter. In this first episode, I want to talk about browsing the Internet, something that I know that you know about already, but I think I can give you an idea or two that you hadn't yet thought about. Using your Internet time like a power user. If you have a few minutes for some tutoring, welcome to Craig's Classroom. So welcome to this lesson, number one in our Tech Tutor series. We're going to be looking at our internet browsing and going beyond the basics. There's lots of things um, that, that will help you as far as making your internet browsing experience just work smarter and you'll be able to do some different things that you perhaps hadn't thought about before. So let's take a look at what that some of those are. But first of all, if we take a look at <coughs> First of all, the experience of the internet browsing is the internet browser. And we really have four different choices. And you can see, um, depending on the, the operating system that you work in, you might be working in Microsoft Windows. And so Internet Explorer might be the, the browser that you're from most familiar with, just because that's the default browser. If you're a Mac user, you might be uh, most familiar with Safari, because that's the, the default browser in Mac. But Throughout the years, the other browsers have stepped up the game a little bit and came into the picture and said, well, let's see if we can build a better browser. Um, we have the browser Firefox that many people are like and use and think that it has some powerful tools. And then in a few years back, Google came along and said, you know what, I think we can make a better browser. And so they came up with Google Chrome. So the first point that I want to make is that you really do have a choice. Um, Safari, if you're on Mac, starts off with, but then you could choose one of the other browsers. Well, at least Firefox and Chrome if you're on Mac. And if you are on Windows, you don't have to stick with Internet Explorer. You could ex you could explore Firefox and Chrome. Now, the the newer versions of Internet Explorer are definitely better than the older. So if you're using an older version, like a 7 or 8 version of Internet Explorer, I definitely recommend that you upgrade. But also, you might want to explore installing one of the other browsers and try it out. And the nice thing is you can install more than one browser on your system. You have multiple icons that you could launch them and try them out simultaneously. You don't have to uninstall one to try another one. So it's very nice. Now, if we look at just so to give you an idea about <clears throat> over time here how the browsers have been faring you can see this chart this is the stat counter website <clears throat> statcounter.com website and it it tracks the usage of the browsers over time now what's interesting here is if you notice the king of the browsers at one time was internet explorer and you can see here uh, they had the browser share market share but over time it's been declining now, who's who's this other browser here? Well, this is your Firefox browser. And so you can see that Firefox um, had a good share, but it has a gentle decline. It's been declining over time, so its user share is is declining a little bit. If you look at this one at the bottom, who's, who's that one? That is um, our Safari browser. So if you get my arrow to work there. So there's my, my Safari browser. You can see over time it's gently gaining usage, but really doesn't have any sort of the market share. But really what the point that stands out in this chart is who is, oh, my arrow keeps not working, right? Let's see if I can get that arrow to work. Who is this green line that started off at 20% and, and over the past two years, here it crossed over Firefox and here it crossed over Internet Explorer. Well, that's Google Chrome. So Google Chrome is a very popular browser. Uh, many people like it. In fact, it's my favorite browser. But again, a point that I want to make is you can use any of the browsers. They've all been in competition with each other. They've come up with um, competitive features. And so, whether you choose the Chrome, the Internet Explorer, Firefox, or Safari, they all are competitive. They all are, have good features. You do have a choice, though. So um, they're free downloads if you do want to go out and explore maybe browsers that have different options. And, and you'll see uh, in my tutorials, I like to use Google Chrome. So that's just the choice that I've made. Now, if we go to 
start looking at things, how can we make our browsing experience better? It doesn't really matter which browser we're in. A lot of these features are available in all the browsers. But the first point that I want to make in the classroom is looking at the tabs feature. So in our browser, we open up a window and it, it brings up a tab at the top of the window that we can then see which windows or which um, sites we have currently open. Now these tabs are, are dynamic. Um, we can open up new tabs, open up new screens, and we can also use these tabs to either close them down or move them around. And I'll show you what that looks like. So if I go over to my desktop here, let me start off here with a Google page. And you can see at the top I've got my tabs here across the top. And I can click onto different tabs of pages that I want to look at. And if I want to open up another page, I can click on this little button at the end that will create a new tab. Now I'm working in Google Chrome here and you can see it does remember my last eight websites that it kind of offers me as my favorites. But let's go ahead, let's go back to our Google page here. Let's work with, uh, let's work with a quick little Google search and let's just see how we can leverage some of the things or features of our browser. So let's say having allergy problems, let's just say we want to say when does, and it I'm going to ask the question, when does tree pollen end in New York City? So I get this whole list of results. The first thing that's really nice to do is you're going to have multiple results here, and you don't know which ones are going to be the best articles, so you're going to go through them one by one and start to see which ones you like. So if you start off at the top, if you were to click on this link, it would open up that page in this tab. Now what I want to do is actually open up this link in a new tab, that way I had I don't lose track of my original search list and I can come back to it and do the next item in the list until I find the article that I want. So what I want to do is open these things in a new tab. And so what I'm going to do is use uh, the on a on a mouse uh, the middle button, or the, actually what's the wheel on the mouse where you do scrolling, like scrolling up and down. You can also click down on that wheel. It's a button also. So so you can click with the wheel button on a link like this and it will open it up in a new tab see that new tab that popped up there and that, that way I can go look at that article and but I can jump back to the original tab and go back to my my original list so let's go down and I'll pick the second tab with my middle button by clicking on the wheel and it opens up in a new tab and you can see uh, today it's not looking very good for pollen uh, tree pollen very high and high and high and high so that's not that's not good news we've got to get past this allergy season but these tabs up at the top here uh, we go back to the first one now I could also use my right mouse button and click on a link and that will also pop up a menu of choices where I can say open the link in a new tab and that would be doing the same thing as clicking on my wheel button so now at the top I've got all these tabs and on each tab I can hit I can close them down if I'm done with them like if I look at this one and I can I'm done reading it I can close it down I can close it down I can the tabs are also dynamic I can drag them around if I take that tab and I dr and I drag it off I can actually let it go over here and it will open that up in a new window now let me show you why that's that particular dynamic aspect of, of this is interesting uh, let's go ahead and close this down done with this one. I'm going to close down my Google search and I'm going to go to the Active Rain website. It's a real estate blogging website many uh, of you are familiar with. <clears throat> but let me go to the page where I have my I see this little pull down menu here. I'm going to show you how to do one of these in a second. But I'm going to go to the page that shows where my blog posts are. This is where I do my blog. And I want to go to a recent blog post. So I'll click on this one. <clears throat> and what I want to show you is really cool about the dynamic aspect of tabs is that you can set up windows side by side. So for instance in this blog post that I wrote at the bottom of the blog post is all the comments and I want to be able to reply to the comments but the reply box is all the way at the bottom and the comment that I want to reply to I'd have to scroll up to. So what I want to do is I want to set up this window or actually two windows side by side so that I can see the comment in one window and be able to reply to the comment in the side by side window. So what I want to do is I'm going to go up to the top of this article and at the top of the article the title of the article is a hyperlink. I'm going to use my middle mouse, my wheel mouse as a button to click on it. That will open up this as a second tab. 
So I have two pages of exactly the same thing. But now watch, if I take this tab and I drag it off, and I'm using Google Chrome, so Chrome has a really cool feature that if I touch the side of the window, see that, that little symbol that hovers up? If I touch the side and let it go, it will rearrange my windows side by side, and that way I can scroll down here to the point that I could actually see the comments, and then on the other window I could scroll down to where I'm actually typing in my replies. So the side by side feature is very cool, and that's using Google Chrome. Now if you're not using Google Chrome, but you're in Windows 7 or 8 or higher in the future versions of Windows, you can do something similar. So let's say I'm not using Chrome, I'm using Firefox, but we'll, we'll illustrate it here uh, with the point that Windows has the ability, if I take any window, uh, it doesn't have to be a browser window, but it could be any window, and if I drag it over and to the side of the screen and touch the side of the screen, Windows will take that window, so take this one over here and touch to the left side of the screen, Windows will actually take that window and size it just right so it takes up the half of the screen. That way you can set up the side-by-side -side windows. Windows has some very cool, like, these what they call snapping features as well. <coughs> just to illustrate the point a little bit too, you can see if I take any window in Windows, if I take the top or the bottom and I drag it up to the edge and touch it, it will resize that window so that it fills top to bottom. See how that works? If I take that and drag it up, it fills top to bottom. So again, you can snap it to the left, you can drag it, snap it to the right, you can drag an edge up to the top, oops, I'm going to go back to my window, take, take an edge, go up or down, that fills the top to bottom. And the other thing that you can do in a snap is you can drag it up to the top of the window and that will actually maximize the window. So that's not a browser feature, that's just a feature of Microsoft Windows in version 7 or higher. But I thought that was very cool and it's very helpful uh, in working with browsers, ha having them be able to be side by side at times. Let's take just a quick break here and we'll get right back to our session momentarily. The fact that you are still watching this many minutes into the episode means that I must have kept your attention. I'm glad for that, as I hope to be providing something valuable for your time. I wanted to highlight how you can support my work in creating episodes just like this one. This recording is the start of a new venture where I share with you the exact things that I teach others in my one-on-one -on -one consulting sessions. My thought is that rather than put these episodes behind a paywall, I try an opt-in sponsorship program. The buttons right there next to this video on this page are quick clicks for you to help support my teaching and give me incentive to create plenty more just like this. And a quick side note, if you are watching this on a YouTube page, notice the link in the description text right below the video. It will take you to the actual episode page on my website where you can find the sponsor buttons. With the crowdfunding principle, it doesn't cost much for individuals to sponsor, but if I get many such sponsors, it will add up to something meaningful. Thanks for watching. Now let's get back to the remainder of this episode. Let's move on to our next topic. If we look at how people do their internet browsing, in fact I get to see quite a few people as I help them with their computer needs, I get to watch them and how they uh, do their browsing, and I'm often surprised at how people don't go about the best way of getting to websites. Let's say you wanted to go to a website like a restaurant, maybe like an Olive Garden. What I see people do is they actually go to a Google page. Now if you if certain brands you know what their 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 domain names are. It's if you're going to Home Depot you go to Home Depot dot com or Lowe's dot com or if searching for that restaurant olivegarden.com you just know certain main brands are just going to be the websites are what their names are or if you saw an advertisement you just want to go to that website because you saw it on the ad you don't need a google search in order as the first step but i see people doing this all the time going to the google search to get the results to get to the page so it's an extra step and then what's funny about that a little bit of insult to injury is some brands will put up an advertisement on the search results and the user will click the advertisement to get to their website so the brand name actually has to pay for that click to get that user there when the user could have just done um, brandname.com so let's go to the browser just to see 
just to see what I'm talking about. Let's say we wanted to go to Olive Garden. So you've got the Google search box here. You've got the address bar up here at the top of the window. So if you want to go to olivegarden.com, you don't start here. You should be up here typing olivegarden.com. But what I see people doing is they just do this to do a search result and sometimes, now in this case here it didn't happen this time, but sometimes you see the very first one at the top of the list is in yellow and in Google that means that's a sponsored ad that the brand will have to pay for that click if you click that link. So it's kind of funny that um, sometimes um, they're actually paying to get the click when the user could have just gone up to the address bar up at the top here and done olivegarden.com and that would have taken them right to the website. So using the address bar is what I wanted to highlight, um, not the Google search, unless you really need a Google search. And the other thing that's interesting here that could happen but doesn't always happen is if, if you're on a website, let's say I'm on a different website, let's say I'm on oh, uh, YouTube.com on the website, and all of a sudden I get in my head I want to search for something. So I could go to Google.com to do my search, or I could just leverage the the address bar as a search bar because most of the browsers will honor the search this address bar as a search bar so if I wanted to search for something I can just go up to my address bar and initiate this search such as um, let's see how to fix a leaky faucet okay so you notice I'm not I'm on a website I'm not going to Google per se I'm just using the address bar to initiate my search and it will go ahead and initiate that search through Google because I've set Google up as my default browser or default search in the browser now the way that you can control that is in each browser is slightly different as to uh, the 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 address bar in so you could change, if you didn't want Google to be your search engine in the, the address bar, you could go over to where you pull down the menu, you go to settings, and you could say in here under search what you want your search engine to be if you type in the, the address box or what they call the Omni box in Google Chrome. Uh, if you happen to be using uh, Firefox, let me just go jump to Firefox for a second. Um, it's similar. Firefox actually has the left and the right side up in the address bar. So in Firefox, you've got up here, you've got the address box, and you could initiate a search there, but they also have a secondary search box over here, which actually is a little bit better to use in the case of Firefox because you can also, you can see, pull down this and you can set which of the search engines you want to use when you type in a search up here. Well, actually, let me take you to Internet Explorer because I want to show you uh, Internet Explorer will um, We'll start off with uh, Bing, probably, as the search engine, so you might not want Bing. Again, there's an option here at the edge of the address bar. Um, pull this down. At the bottom of this, you can see these are the search providers. You can pick the search provider that you want, or you can click the button that says Add a Search Provider, and you can pick Google. If Google happens to not be on this list, you can pick Google and put that into your list and set it as default. So. Again, so browsing the internet, um, knowing when to use the Google search box, when to use the address box, and then also knowing when to just go to, up to the address bar. And if you know a website, you can just type in, let's say, if you know the keyword, you don't even have to type in the .com. Let's say I wanted to do Lowe's.com. I can do L-O-W-E-S, and then I can just hit Control Enter, and it will fill in the www.com for me. So Control Enter on the Windows PC is a great uh, technique to get you quickly if you just know the keyword like Lowe's, Olive Garden, Home Depot, uh, etc. You can just type in the keyword and hit Control Enter, and it will take you to the www.com version of that website. So that's understanding the search box when you need it, the address box when you need it, and how to set your uh, default search uh, in your browser so that you can get the search provider that you want. 
The other thing that I, I like to really highlight is the browsers are smart. The more we browse, the more they, they understand the sites that we like to go to. And it comes up with an auto-suggest. If we just stop for a second and notice what it's doing, we can type just usually one character, maybe two characters, and the extreme case, three characters. And if we've been to that site before, the browser is going to say, hey, I'm going to suggest what I think you want to go to. So let me show you that. So let's head over to the browser so we can see how this autocomplete is going to work. So here I am in the browser and let's just test out if I type in just a letter, what am I going to get in my uh, address box up here? So let's just try P. What am I going to get? P. And it pops up plus or Google plus plus.google.com. All I need to do after typing one letter is hit enter and it's going to take me over to that website. Let's try a couple more. Let's type let me click up in the address bar and type M. I'm going to get maps.google.com. So the, what the browser is doing is it's learning the websites that I like to go to and it's going to auto-suggest a website based on just a, a character, maybe a couple characters. Let's try A. Oh, it found Amazon.com. It knows I like to go to Amazon.com, so I type Enter, and it takes me there. Well, what if I wanted to go to Active Rain? Well, this is the case. Perhaps I need to type more than just one letter. I'm going to type A, C, and just with two letters and an Enter, it's going to shoot me over to Active Rain. Let's try just one more. I'm going to type in Y, and I get YouTube. So you see, the auto suggest is a very powerful feature, but you have to you have to recognize what it's doing and not miss an opportunity you're just typing in a one or two letters and that's going to take you to a lot of the top level sites that you like to frequent and you don't really need to make shortcuts for these sites because it's so easy just to type them into the address bar so that's using your auto suggest feature in your browser now the next point I want to just highlight is a functionality of some different things that you can do to make your browsing easier. For instance, the F11 key in your browser is going to make your browser window full screen. Let's take a look at the browser to see how this is going to work. So let me jump back to Google Plus, P or PL in my case. And so there's our br typical browser window at normal size, but let's say we wanted to just spend a little time on this site and we just wanted to maximize the experience. If I press the F11 key, that'll just take that whole window to full screen. And in that case, with Google+, Plus, it actually says, well, I've got more room for your tiles in Google+, Plus, so it's going to give me three columns of tiles instead of two. And that way I can just browse through the site here and take a look at what's going on in all the connections that I have and people that I've circled. Now another great tip uh, when you're browsing is that on a site like this where you have a, a stream or news feed, you got pages of information, well you could use the page down key or you could use the wheel on the mouse to roll the wheel like I'm doing here, but an, another great tip for browsing is to use the space bar. The space bar is equivalent to a page down enter, entry. It goes one page down every time I touch the space bar. But the spacebar is such an easily accessible key, it's just very easy to hit. And that way it's a quick way for you to browse through a page that has a long, a long list of information like a Google Plus or a Facebook. If I press Shift plus the spacebar, it will do in the reverse in page up. So <clears throat> once again, F11 will get me to full screen and the spacebar, whether you're full screen or not, the spacebar will act as the page down key. So let me push F11 again. I'm going to come out of full screen mode and you can see that's how you get in and out of full screen mode is <coughs> with the F11 key. Now, let's take a look at other tricks that we can use with that mouse and using it to its our, our fullest advantage. So we've already seen that the wheel on the mouse helps us to scroll up or down by rolling it. If we click on the wheel, so that wheel on the mouse, we could actually click on it. It acts like a button. And we saw that earlier. If you click on a link, it will open that link in a new tab so you don't lose your original page. That's very helpful. But what I wanted to show you at this point was the, the, the wheel also acts as a zoom in, zoom out tool, but we have to hold the control key down when we do that. Let's go back to the browser for a minute. I'm going to go to G for Google, enter, and earlier I was looking at Windows Tree Pollen End in New York City. We looked at this. Um, 
there's some different sites we went to. I this site in particular I went to, and some some websites in their design, it makes you wish like, could could they have used perhaps a bigger font? Their font selection is a little bit small, so how can we make that easier to read? So if I hold the control key down along with my wheel and I'm rolling upwards, you can see that that's actually zooming the website to bigger. Or if I, and this is with the control key held down and the wheel going up, it's making it zoomed in. If I roll the wheel back down, it zooms downward and you see up at the top this little magnifying glass does appear. I can click reset to default or I can press control plus the number zero. So if I'm zoomed in, the shortcut is control plus the number zero and that will reset my zoom back to 100% normal. But again, that's helpful for you on certain websites if you think that it just looks too small or even if you wanted to make it zoom way out, you could even do that. I don't, I'm not sure if that's too helpful, but zooming in definitely is helpful, and that helps you sometimes read or see better sites that have a design that seems a little bit too small. So again, that's using the wheel on the mouse for some different tools that are going to help you in your internet browsing. So the next thing, let me take you to this idea here. When we're browsing the internet, we often, well we've already seen the case if a lot of websites just top level domains like Amazon.com or YouTube.com, we can just use the address bar and just start typing in a couple letters. But there are lots of pages on the web that aren't just as easy as getting to just the top level domain. We want to get into the website a little bit deeper. If it's the if we want the weather, we might the we want the weather forecast for our specific location. Or a lot of you watching are from activerain.com on that blog site. There are lots of sub menus like my home page or my comments page or different things like that. So those are sub level uh, parts of the website that we like to go to. So what I like to, to leverage is in the browser, whatever browser you're using, we can turn on what they call a favorites bar, a bookmarks bar different names for it, but it's the same thing. And it, it falls underneath the address bar and we can set up presets for different websites that we like to go to. And so we can set up those favorite places that we like to go to that aren't just a top level, but deep, a little bit deeper into the website. So I'm going to show you right now how to do that. Um, what we want to do is set up this bookmark bar that has the different favorite places that we like to go to. So we're basically going to take the icon that's up in the address bar and we're going to drag it down and put it, drop it onto the bookmarks bar. So let's first of all, let's go to the different browsers really quickly and see that. First of all, you have to get your bookmark bars to be turned on. In Google Chrome here you can see um, I've got my address bar but there's nothing underneath it so if you know this there's a shortcut and but if you don't know the shortcut you have to go through the menu here and on the menu you can see that you see bookmarks and it says show the bookmarks bar but you also see the shortcut is control shift B B for bookmarks so if I do control shift B it turns on and off my bookmarks bar so you can see I've already loaded up my bookmarks bar uh, with lots of different shortcuts and I'll show you how to create these but let's go to quickly to the other browsers just so you can see if you're using the other browser how that looks so in Internet Explorer again you can see Internet Explorer at this point has what they call the menu bar and the bookmarks bar on and you can turn these on and off if I if I right click over here next to the tab here you can see uh, I've got my favorites bar on and my favorites, see I, I can right click, I'm over next to the tab, right click and choose favorites bar on or off and that way you can see that that bar is ready to be used. If I'm in Firefox, here we got underneath the address bar, the this bar here as well and you can see again if I right click next to my tabs I've, I can turn on and right click turn it on and off, so I'm going to put it back on, that bookmarks bar is there. So you can see in the different browsers it really, whether it's called the favorites bar or the bookmarks bar, it does the same thing. Um, it just sets up a place for you to drop your shortcuts onto. Now let's get these out of the way. I'm going to work in Google Chrome for the rest of this just to show you how it works. Actually, you know what? I should probably choose uh, let's go to Internet Explorer because my bookmarks bar here in Internet Explorer is kind of barren so we need to fill it in a little bit. So let's say that we have, let's say I'm going to put in weather in my zip code and 
there's our weather today and what I really wanted to do was to do the 10 day weather forecast for us so that's going to jump me over to the weather.com site in the specific page to my location so there's a, a place that I would like to come back to in the future without having to go two steps to get there so what I'm going to do is go up to my address bar and right next to that address do you see there, there's an icon for the website that I'm on and so if I take this little icon here and you see where it's popping up drag to taskbar to pin the site well it's what I want to do is not to the taskbar but to the bookmarks bar so I'm going to take that icon and drag it and I can drop it off on my bookmarks bar and it will go ahead and create a shortcut to that site now you can see it gives me this really long title of the page that I'm on and if I only had you know three or four pages that I ever visited um, my bookmarks bar would be filled up with those three or four pages. Well, I have lots of pages I want to visit. So the next thing I always do is if I right click on that, I'm looking for either edit or properties or something to that effect. In this case, Internet Explorer calls it properties. Oh, actually, in Internet Explorer, you can go directly to rename. So what you can do here is it pops up and you can say, what do I want to rename it to? And I always like abbreviations. So I might do um, uh, weather that could be one way I could abbreviate it again uh, if it's me just looking at this bar um, I might be able to do WF for weather forecast nobody else might know what WF is but I would because it's a it's a button that I click all the time but I like very short names short as possible because that allows me to fill up my bar with more and more things so if I do a WF um, that would be a very short one. So the other thing is some websites you might actually have uh, several different pages that you go to. Um, so let's say I wanted to uh, map maybe with the radar. So there's the current radar for us. So I would take this this icon here and drag it down onto the bookmarks bar and again I'm going to right click I'm going to do rename and this see this might be WR for weather radar that would just be again a shortcut that if I could memorize that <coughs> and now I have two icons to the weather channel or the the weather.com site so the more and more links that you get to a particular site you might want to set up a folder that contains all the links together so as I have multiple here, you see I can. I'd be nice to combine them. So what I want to do is if I if I right click on one of those and then I can create a new folder, and it's going to say create a folder on the favorites bar, and I could actually type out weather or something like that, and create the folder, and then I could drag the, drag the links in and drop them off into the folder. And that will create a sub menu that I can pull down and I can get to my different links. So actually the, the strategy I would use if I'm putting them into these folders is that we don't have to use such abbreviated um, names here. If they're in a folder, the folder name can be short, but the entries can be a little bit longer. So maybe I want to rename those entries back to forecast. And if I drop that down and then I Click, right click and do rename that might be uh, radar it's just we don't have to abbreviate quite so much if we're doing the sub lists so there I have forecast and radar and what's also cool is if you have a whole bunch of different sites linked up inside of a, a menu like this as I pull this down you can see I, there's an option that says open in tabs that would say open everything in that list up into tabs in one click and see it right it gave me those two sh shot just with one click it just opened up everything that was in that whole menu uh, in separate tabs and that's kinda cool to do as well now I know a lot of you are coming from the active rain website um, so that's that blogging website for real estate uh, industry so okay let's head over to the active rain website let me get a browser window here uh, I'm gonna use this in this case Internet Explorer just to show you that uh, depending on the doesn't really matter which browser you use as far as if you want to make a custom bookmarks or favorites bar they all actually work very similarly so what we're going to do is we're going to let me go ahead and just delete I already have one here that I was just um, had earlier so I'm going to delete that and we're going to I'm just going to show you how to create that from scratch so here's our bookmarks or favorites bar here in Internet Explorer and we have a weather 
favorites, but let's add an active rain favorites menu to our, our bookmarks bar. So let's start off with if I go to AC active rain and there's there's our first page of active rain that's we might add to a bookmarks bar. So let me take this little icon that's next to the address right there. Every page has a little icon there. I just drag it and drop it off on the bookmarks bar. And if I right click on it, I can rename it to a name that's a little bit more friendly to what I want to see. Um, if we're thinking this is going to be a menu item, so I'll say this is the AR home page. So AR home, something like that. Alright, so there's my first icon. Now I'm going to make a whole bunch of icons and instead of going horizontally across the bar and taking up all the space just for one website really, and remember the bookmarks bar works great for the secondary pages of a website. So we're going to have a whole bunch of secondary pages that we like to visit. So I'm going to actually right click on that one that I've made already and I'm going to say new folder and you'll see it's, it's going to make a new folder in my favorites bar and I can just call the folder AR. Again, shorter names on your favorites bar means that you can put more things on your favorites bar than if you had to uh, put in long names, so it will take up more space. So go ahead and make an AR folder and it, that little arrow means it will pull down into all sub-secondary choices. So I'm going to take this first item and drag it over into my AR folder and there's my menu already starting to build with an AR home. Now let's go to some different secondary pages on Active Rain so we can see uh, how this is going to build out. So I'm going to choose at the top here, I'll choose My Home on Active Rain. That's a great page because it tells you uh, what's, rec what's your activity, people have been commenting, how many uh, different points you have and different things like that. So that's a great secondary page on Active Rain. So let me take that little icon next to the address bar, drag it over and drop it off on my bookmarks bar. I'll right click on that and choose rename. Now if you're in, this is um, Internet Explorer, has a rename op option. Um, if you're in Google Chrome, you might have to choose edit. It's a different command, um, but it gets you to the same place where you can rename items. So if you choose rename, then I'll say this is my home. So this is a page specifically to me with my statistics and so forth. So then I'll take that icon, drag it over into the AR bar. Okay, so I'm building it out now. I've got a couple items in there. Let's go to just a couple more favorite pages that you can just you can see how this is working. So let's go to let's see, I want to see I want to follow up on my comments. So on active rain, you can see down below you can see that there's a item here under settings. Uh, actually it's under other and there's an item here that says my comments if I choose that it'll take us to a page where you have a list of all the comments that I've made so I can take that icon drag it over here onto the address the favorites bar again right click rename and we'll call that my comments and we'll take drag that over into the AR bar let's do just a couple more so let's say I want to check up on the people that I have subscribed to. So up here on the top we've got an item that says following. So that will take me to a page of people that I have subscribed to. And we'll take, let's drag that icon down to the address bar, right click, rename, and we'll say uh, my subs or my subscriptions. And we'll drag that over to the AR pull down menu, you can see it's going to build out now all these different favorite pages that we like to go to. Let's just do two more. So let me go back to my home page. I want to go to my traffic page, which is my statistics page that tells me all of my recent blog posts and how many people have been clicking on at. So that's a great one to have in your pull down menu. So let's take that one, drag it down to the menu bar, rename it, that's with a right click of course, and we'll say traffic and we'll drag that over into the AR submenu. And one more. Let's go to my list or the page that has all my blog posts that are still in draft mode. So we, that was under here, under my picture, under your picture, you'll see it says view drafts. That will take you to that page and we'll take that icon, drag it down here, right click, rename, and we'll say drafts. And we'll put that into the active rain pull down menu.
So there you have it. Just that easy. You built a custom menu of your favorite Active Rain pages, and it will help you quickly navigate the secondary pages of Active Rain, and that's going to save you some time as to jumping all over the page, because there are certainly certain pages that you like to frequently visit. And to build a custom menu, and a custom actually menu that pulls down with secondary items, you can see it's a very helpful navigational tool that will help you in your web browsing. So there it is, we're leveraging our favorite spar and helping us to browse the web smarter and faster. So there's just one more point in our session today that I wanted to highlight f for you and that's uh, back to this little icon that's in our address bar here. We know we've been talking about dragging that into our favorites bar and those are for the sites that we come back to often. But what about a site that you stumble across or that you're doing some research on and you find a page that you want to come back to because you don't have time to read more about it right this very moment. So let's take a, a this this tip is going to be where you take this icon, don't drag it into your favorites bar because that's more of a permanent place for the places you go to. But what about if you drag that icon over to the desktop and drop it off and the desktop should be a place for you to have temporary things and hopefully you don't have a big cluttered desktop I know a lot of people do but uh, the, the desktop is really just a place for some temporary things and I try to keep my desktop fairly clean and so only icons on there are things that I have active like I, I'm going to come back and then after as soon as I come back I'm going to go ahead and delete that icon let me show you what that's going to look like so if I drop back to my desktop here and let's call up, see, I try to keep my desktop kind of cleaned up here. If I come back to a browser window, this is a, an article that I was looking up earlier today, um, but I ran out of time. So you notice in the address bar there's our little icon that we've been dragging to our favorites bar, but I don't have time to read this article right now. I'm going to take this icon and I'm going to drag it over and drop it off on my desktop. And there's a little shortcut icon on my desktop that I can come back and read this later or watch this later if it happens to be a video page or something like that. So taking an icon from the address bar, dragging it over to the desktop, that's a great way to save it for later. Once you come back and read it later, then you can go ahead and take that icon and go ahead and delete it. That way you keep keeping your desktop nice and clean. Well, there is our session for today. I'm very glad that you joined me and we've been talking all sorts of things and tips and techniques about browsing the internet and hopefully I've pointed out several things for you to think about to put into your toolbox these different tips and techniques to make your internet browsing better and have a smarter ex and, and better experience in browsing the internet. I'm Craig Daniels. I thank you for joining me in Craig's classroom. This has been the first video in the Tech Tutor series, and I hope to be making many more after this. Thanks for joining me today, and we'll see you again soon.